Now, as a biochemist, it won't come as a surprise when I say that I like proteins. In fact, I've even dressed up as a protein on more than one occasion. Proteins are the molecular machines, the enzymes, the structural components, the dynamic elements that make up the cell. They do stuff. And that's a good thing, not just for our cells, but also for understanding ageing. If protein X goes up or down with age, this could provide us with actionable information. Now, this idea of course is not novel. In fact, one of the earliest videos I made on this channel was about undulating changes in the human plasma proteome with age. And while that still is a great paper, and we'll come back to it later, a new paper has come out and used a much larger data set to create a proteomic aging clock to predict mortality and risk of common age-related diseases. So in this video, we'll take a look at this new paper and what we can learn from it, and then compare their results with another new paper that looked at multiple biological variables to observe non-linear changes. So the essence of this video is all about this concept of biological aging, and that's in opposition to simply your chronological age. The logic being that biological age provides a better approximation of your health as it measures your actual biological data, as opposed to making a guess based on the expected level of functioning given your given chronological age. In other words, most of us are perhaps close to, but not the same as the average person. And so of course it makes more sense to actually measure our biological variables to give an indication of our health instead of taking an approximation from our chronological age. But that is only worth doing and taking all the effort and cost of measuring if it's actually good at guessing. For example, I could pay someone to cut off exactly five centimetres of my hair, or I could approximate it and do it myself for free. So today we'll first turn to proteins as a measure for ageing. So in the study they analysed how protein presence and abundance varies with age and used that to build a standard linear model. From here, they can take an individual and calculate their protein age compared to their expected based on their chronological age and get a protein age gap. The gap is the difference between their protein age and their chronological age. So a higher number means that they're aging faster than expected. How did they create this model, I hear you ask? Well, they used the UK Biobank which, similar to this YouTube channel, is a good resource to have come from the UK. <laughs> and what this UK Biobank contains is plasma proteomic expression data from over 45,000 participants. So now they had this data, they could calculate the protein age gap for all of the participants, and then associate that with different health markers. And interestingly, they found correlations between a higher protein age and higher cytostatin C levels and C reactive protein levels and physical measures like slower walking. Higher protein age gap was also associated with shorter telomere lengths. So it seemed like this protein age gap is a good predictor. And in fact, patients with a higher protein age gap in all categories on the screen had worse incidence rates for all cause mortality and diabetes, liver disease with the bottom 10% looking the best off. But the cool part really about this study is that they're using proteins and we have a decent understanding of what proteins are doing and how their abundance may impact a cell or tissue. So what can we learn from these proteins? Well, their original model used 204 proteins, but they actually were able to make a clock with only 20 of these proteins. And these aging proteins that they identified include cell adhesion and extracellular matrix interactions, including elastin and some collagen compounds. Again, immune response and inflammation, hormone regulation and reproduction, cell signaling, protease activity and enzymatic function, regulation of body weight and energy balance, neuronal structure and function, and development and differentiation. You can see the actual proteins on the screen now, so if you're studying any of them, take note. Now, the nice thing about this paper is the amount of data it has to build their, their model. But it's different to the paper I covered last time, where last time the authors looked at how proteins in the plasma change of age, and they noticed that the trend wasn't linear, but it undulated, like a flag blowing in the wind. 
and by analysing this ageing human plasma proteome, they found that most changes across the lifespan are non-linear and, in co- and occur in waves at around 34, 60 and 78 years. Now, the reason I bring this paper back into the picture is because it closely matches the second recent paper, Non-Linear Dynamics of Multi-Omics Profiles During Human Aging, which, as it states, looks at not just proteins, but also metabolites, garden skin microbiome, transcriptomics, and clinical lab tests, totaling almost 250 billion data points. But while that does sound impressive, the sample size in this paper is really quite small, with just over 100 people. However, from those 100 people, they tracked their measurements over time. Albeit, the second caveat with this paper is the average time they tracked was only 1.7 years. So, yes, there are some major limitations with this data set. However, interestingly, what they find is that most molecules and microbes undergo non-linear changes during human aging. In fact, 81% of the molecules had non-linear patterns. And the authors also show here that these changes can be clustered into waves of ageing-related molecules, a cluster at 44 years and a cluster at 60 years. The younger cluster is linked with modules associated with lipid and alcohol metabolism, whereas the cluster at 60 years is linked with modules related to immune dysfunction. So it almost matches the other proteomic paper, albeit here they are missing this later peak, but that is most likely due to a limitation of the smaller data set that they have here. So there you have it, a proteomic aging clock that's not just ticking, but also talking, giving us valuable insights into our health and longevity. But perhaps that ticking isn't linear and speeds up and slows down. Ultimately, while the first paper has a decent data set to support the findings, more longitudinal data will be required to assess whether or not these proteomic changes are indeed non-linear, as suggested from the second paper. However, as is often the case of science, I think these papers raise more questions than they actually answer. Is ageing linear or non-linear? And how does that impact how we should be studying aging or what does that tell us about the aging process? Is it really stochastic and random damage that accumulates over time? Or is there some endogenous program that has certain periods of life where there is a more rapid decline? I don't have the answers unfortunately yet, but maybe one day we will. Nonetheless, these papers will serve as good resources for future studies.